Hey, what's up, YouTube? You're at the We All Juggle Knives channel. Welcome to my review of the Bybury 13 in 1 Multi Tool. All right, the current price on this is around $36. Price is subject to change. It's available on Amazon. I'll include a link to this as well as many other budget friendly multi tools. All right, here is a size comparison for you. From the left, we have the Victorinox Rescue Tool, the Swiss Tool Spirit X, the Bybury, the Leatherman Wave a Gerber MP600, and the SOG Power Lock. So as you can see, it's a little bit more bulky than that Leatherman Wave, uh, but it is certainly not the largest multi-tool out there. All right, let's get into the tool set. It's got your typical multi-tool pliers with wire cutters. It's got a two-sided file, some large scissors. It has a plain-edged knife blade with one-handed opening. Now the blade length by my measure two and three quarters inches, and that is a locking blade. It's got a liner lock. It also has one-handed opening for the wood saw, and that locks as well. All right, so that's pretty cool for bushcrafting, all your woodworking, your, your notching, and your sawing. And for the shorter tools, you've got a Phillips screwdriver. You've got a reamer, which you can use as an awl as well. You've got a serrated cutting hook or rescue hook. You've got a bottle opener with a flathead at the end, and you also have a can opener with another flathead at the end, kind of like on a, on a Victorinox knife. And what is that? That is a porcupine dequiller. No, I'm just kidding. That's actually a lanyard ring if you want to put a, a lanyard onto your multi-tool. All right, here I'm showing you how those locks work, the liner locks on three of the longer tools. It's basically a liner lock, kind of just like you would have on the Leatherman Wave, and then it has back springs for the shorter tools. All right, so the shorter tools don't have a hard lock, but they have a back spring. It's like a slip joint. They do have some resistance, some stiffness, which is good, makes it a little safer. All right, so the shorter tools, they have back springs you see there. This also comes with a sheath. It's got some nice belt loops on the back for horizontal or vertical, and a Velcro flap on the front. And it's just a fairly thick and sturdy sheath uh, for this price range. All right, lots of usage footage. Let's start off with the wood saw. I'm going to saw two parallel grooves and you'll see, All right? But what I noticed about this saw is that it's, it's better than a, a lot of multi-tool saws I've tested because it does not really get hung up very much at all. Uh, some multi-tool saws, you know, they're, they're kind of thick and unwieldy sometimes. They're, they get hung up and then you got to hold that piece of firewood uh, very hard uh, just to have it not move. But this one, it pretty much easily glides through it and it's also a fast saw. So I was pleasantly surprised by the usefulness of this saw. All right, in only a short period of time, made some nice precise grooves. And I think you can guess what we're going to do, at least if you've seen my previous multi-tool reviews. A little bit of blade usage, take this opportunity. So we're, we're going to remove that material. Uh, I used the blade just to test it out a little bit. And I find that it's, it's best to start at the corners, right? The, the corners of the piece that you're going to remove. Right, but it does take a while. Don't worry, I'm I'm not going to torment you with uh, you know 10 minutes of that. But after uh, 10 minutes or less, that's what you get a nice groove, and then you can fit that together and you can build whatever you need to build. Okay, speaking of bushcraft, we need fire, lots and lots of fire. All right, now I'm just kidding. This is the moldy rock of fire starting. I'm using the file as a striker on my fire steel. Now I could have used the edge on the reamer as well, but the file is longer and I just wanted to use the file for something. I could have also used the saw, but I already used it. And now is the time where we stare into the fire and we think about all our sins coming due. What have you done with your life? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I might even use the file to file something. There's a thought, no, I'm just kidding. Well. I guess I was being literal, actually. That's a rusty nail. I'm filing the rusty nail because it, a rusty nail allows you to see the parts of it that actually got filed, if that makes sense. There you see right there. Now, I do wish they'd make this a three-sided file instead of just the two-sided, because, hey, you know, why, why not have a three-sided file? But anyway, there you see, filed some of the rust off of that nail. And this is just from moments before. Where did that rusty nail come from? Well, it came from... Uh, the palette of infinite nails 
And I figured, hey, why don't I just uh, put some usage on these pliers, grip something, and uh, pull on it, right? Now, that, that nail was a little longer than I thought. It resisted me a little bit. You got to be careful because if you slip down onto the wire cutter part, and especially against uh, on a nail, and then let's say you torque it the wrong way, you could break your wire cutters. And yeah, I'm ashamed to admit I've done that before, but not this time. All right, so that was the, uh, the pliers gripping and pulling on something. All right, another use of this file. So it's a striker, it's a file. You can also use it as a pry tool because as you saw there, the end of it is kind of ground, ground like a pry tool, right? So, but you got to use common sense. I would not pull on the handle of the multi-tool because you could mess up the pivot, you could snap this. So as you see, I'm choking, you know, choking up on the uh, fold out file itself. So you can use it as a little pry tool so yeah, in a pinch, you can use this as a pry tool, but you gotta restrain your massive strength a little because you could snap it. Let's do a knife review in the middle of the multi-tool review. Here's my Emerson Super Commander. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna adjust that pivot screw <laughs> with the end of the file. All right, so this is a, a striker, a file, a pry tool, and it's uh, a screwdriver. That's pretty useful for, for one implement. All right, so there's a screwdriver use onto the blade. Initial sharpness. Yes, that's a beautiful sound, is it not? All right, so it came very sharp, but what about tougher materials? Here it is being used as a utility knife. It's not inconceivable that you could use the, uh, the blade on your multi-tool in place of a utility knife for whatever reason, you know, in a pinch unexpectedly. Uh, depending on what your job is. And after I cut up, well, I reviewed the footage. I cut up cardboard for eight minutes straight, but don't worry, it's, I'm not going to include the whole eight minutes. This is just the highlight reel. But after I did eight minutes of cardboard cutting uh, with fairly thick cardboard, I did some whittling just to see if the, uh, the knife edge remained sharp. And so, uh, yeah, we, you will see if it did or if it did not. But overall, I am liking this tool, you know, in the price on this, it's in the, the mid 30s, at least right now. So this is in the budget category, you know, it's uh, the Leatherman sidekick is is about 60 right now. So Leatherman doesn't even have anything in this lower price range, but this is competing with Gerber's and with Ganzo's, for example. All right. So it made short work of that rather thick cardboard. So if you ne needed to use this as a utility knife, you could in a pinch, but you really should have a utility knife too. All right, so as I said, I was curious if this would still be sharp after uh, cutting so much gnarly cardboard, and it was. It was actually quite good at whittling. What I noticed about this blade, which I really like, they've ground it very thin, right? So it has a lot of cutting and slicing ability. Like if you wanted to make a knife extremely strong, you'd probably make it thick with a broad edge, almost like a hatchet edge, right? If you were trying to make some sort of bomb-proof survival knife. But I like the opposite when you're talking about a small folding knife or a small folding blade on a multi-tool. I'm not going to be chopping branches with a, a sub three inch folding blade, right? I'm not going to be chopping branches or anything like that. So I like it that they ground it thin so it just has maximum cutting and slicing ability and this did you know it was actually just as good as some of my specialty whittling knives at the whittlings there's my handiwork you can make your vampire steak or your your rambo trap or whatever you need to make okay bok choy we got one more this was requested i got backpackers the ultralight backpackers they want to use their multi-tool for everything, including food prep and including like an eating utensil. Well, yeah, you can't, I mean, it's it's very good at slicing, so you can chop up your food. You could prepare like a squirrel as well. Um, it's just that, you know, it's got a multi-tool handle, so it's not quite as comfortable as like your kitchen cutlery. But if that's your only blade you have on you, uh, yeah, you could use this for the food prep. All right, let's do the reamer, more woodwork. So you see how that's ground. It is ground properly for use as a reamer. A reamer is basically a hand drill. We're going to drill a divot in this piece of firewood, but you could drill a, you could drill a hole. For example, let's say you were carving the replacement handle for a hatchet and you wanted to drill a lanyard hole in your hatchet handle. 
you could do so with a reamer. It would take a little bit of time, but, um, you know, sometimes when you're out in the field, all, all you got is time, and you might as well pass it. So there's the divot. All right, so the reamer works well. Now, a reamer can also be used as an awl or as a punch, rather. It does not have a sewing hole, but it can be used, like, as a punch, right? That is uh, two layers of canvas, an old sheath that gave its life for the cause. But, yeah, you could use this as a, a leather punch or punch through whatever you need, whatever cloth you need. So it can be used like a, an awl as a punch. All right, here is the serrated blade. Now, the serrations are not very sharp, but... Uh, they're still pointy, and so that, that is just uh, an old strap. We're going to cut the strap. So you basically have to saw back and forth, right? And it can work through, right? So, yeah, that's the cut. You can also cut other things, like I have some bike tubing, just any sort of hose or rubber tubing that you might need to cut. And again, uh, you just pull it back and forth and let those serrations do their thing, right? So that's a serrated cutting hook. It could be useful in some situations. I'm glad they didn't devote a longer tool to it. Oh, the bottle opener. All right, so we got some hard cider, which I bought just to test the bottle opener. I'm not going to drink that. I'm on a limited calorie diet. All right, next up, the wire cutter. So we got some uh, fair... We're going to start with some fairly easy wire. That's what I call it. And yeah, the, it works very well on this uh, fairly thin wire. This is just the, the warm-up, though, because I've had some requests for cutting cable wire. Will it do it? I, I think, I, I believe, I believe in us. All right, this is the, the triple-strand cable wire. Yeah, you know this stuff. A lot of people got to cut this on the job, and that's why they wanted to see it. So here it is. Can it do it? It can, yes. All right, so if, if you do have to cut this stuff on the job... Uh, the, those wire cutters on this multi-tool will suffice. All right, more screwdrivers. So this has four screwdrivers, right? I've already shown the uh, screwdriver at the end of the file. So it's got three more screwdrivers. First, we'll do the Phillips. That's my Kershaw Camp 12 donating a screw today. All right, so that's the Phillips driver. Yes, a mundane function. And I'm pretty sure we all know how a screwdriver works, but I figured for completion's sake, I would show it anyway. Right, so how are you all doing? Christmas is coming up. You want to do some shopping? I'll include a lot of links in the text description box. If you got all your multi-tools, you should buy some, some budget-friendly backup tools. If you got all your backup tools, you got to buy some tools for your, you know, your brother-in-law and your, your crazy uncle and everybody else who needs, uh, you want to get into prepping. All right, here's another one of the screwdrivers. The one at the end of the can opener, and again, that's my uh, Emerson Super Commander. Right now, the Super Commander, that pivot screw is designed so you could actually adjust it in the field with a coin, right? Meaning the slot is fairly wide. So, like these screwdrivers, they're going to be a little wobbly because that, that slot is extra wide on that pivot screw. But nonetheless, you see the um, flathead at the end of the bottle opener. It's, it's pretty useful to have to have four screwdrivers at your disposal. All right, the scissors. They are very good for cutting paper. Now, these scissors, these were a lot better than I thought they would be. Let me just, uh, you know, spill the beans right now. These are some boss scissors. Uh, that's eight layers of paper that I folded because of, uh, you know, my origami hobby. Uh, just kidding. But these scissors... Nothing can stop these scissors. All right, here's cardboard, and you saw it was pretty thick cardboard. Yeah, I, w I was surprised at the quality because um, usually budget multi-tools will have, uh, their scissors won't be too good, but these are actually very high quality scissors. Now, if you look at this tool, that's some twine or some cord. does very well. If you look at this multi-tool, the one, one arm of the multi-tool or one handle is actually wider than the other and that is so that they can give you a wider larger blade and bigger scissors and in this case that has really paid off because uh, these scissors uh, I was just very pleased with them that is some plastic bindings that you get on uh, tiles and on on packages with like uh, squares of glass sometimes uh, anything tile shaped and they did good on that now there is a trick to these scissors 
you got to cut as close to the pivot as you can. That's how they perform best. And that's just a piece of that strap that I cut with the uh, hook. Whatever material that is, whatever cloth that is, the scissors uh, can eat it for breakfast. No problem. All right, but how will they do against the rubber tubing? Going to make a ranger band here. And as I said, cut as close to the pivot as possible, which is how scissors are supposed to work. So there you go. It makes a ranger band with the uh, bike tire tubing. And now we got some paracord. And it even can cut the paracord pretty well. And as I said, as close, you can't, it cannot cut them. If you cut towards the tip, it cannot cut the paracord. But I discovered if you cut towards the pivot, it can indeed go through it. All right, so I'm very pleased with the scissors. This has some of the best scissors on a budget multi-tool. Now here is a size and shape comparison with the three major uh, Bybury multi-tools out there right now. We've got the 13-in-1, in the center is the 18-in-1, and next to that is the 21-in-1. Now I've already done a full review of that 18-in-1. At the time it was being sold by Henstrong, but since then, Bybury has acquired the rights to distribute that tool, so you can check out the full review of that. And the review of the 21-in-1, that will be for the future, but it looks very good, very promising. I will include links to all of these if you want to check out the tool sets on those other two tools. All right, final thoughts. Stare into the fire and think about your life and where you went wrong. No, just kidding. Just enjoy the fire as I do the final thoughts on this multi-tool. Well, let's go. What are the highlights? The blade is done really well because they've ground it thin and it's uh, it just has a lot of cutting ability, which is surprising because we've certainly seen many multi-tool blades in the, these reviews that were ground badly and that didn't have a real edge. Uh, this had a boss edge. Uh, the scissors performed very well. I couldn't find any substance that they uh, that they couldn't cut you know they can't cut steel oh they suck now they won't cut steel but they cut anything you'd need to cut uh the four screwdrivers that's a good thing the reamer worked well uh yeah this this tool pretty much worked very well i mean for like 35 or some dollars a uh, definite bargain in my book what would i change um you know i might change the small serrated blade just because i like the idea of a small serrated blade but serrations are very hard to do right. I mean, there's only a few companies out there that I trust to do any serrations at all. Another thing they could do would be to add some hard locks to for the shorter tools. And as I said, the arm of the can opener, if they hook that more, it'll give more leverage. But I mean, these are small things, you know, the serrations, the can opener, these are small things. Overall, this is a this multi-tool is a bargain. I'm surprised. Uh, very stiff competition. Yeah, very stiff for, for, and I like the Gerber Truss a lot. Check out my Gerber Truss review. But very stiff competition for Gerbers and Ganzos in that $30 to $40 uh, pricing category. That's a category that Leatherman seems to have abandoned, right? With the Skeletool being $55 uh, as I post this and the Sidekick being $60 and the Rebar being $70. Yeah, Leatherman does not show up in this $30 to $40 category. So if you need a multi-tool in this price category, yeah, this is one of the, this is one of the top for in that category. I mean, you know, I'm not going to say, "Oh, you know, use like a better blade steel because that's not really viable in this category, but I would say that to, you know, Leatherman's $140 multi-tools should use a better blade steel." All right, I hope you enjoyed this review. Please check out the text description box and do your normal shopping through the Amazon links there. Those do help the channel, and I really appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed, feel free to do so. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.